Hey, this is Miguel Miggs, and you're tuned in to Music Box on Jovan Pan Online. I enjoy traveling the world and sharing the music that I do with the people, so that's what I do, and that's what I'm here for right now, to uh, hopefully play some music for the people and have a, have a good time, turn them on to something new, maybe something that they're not used to, give them a little taste of uh, some soulful electronic music. You play this soulful, so open air and so daylight music. Uh, do you like to play here in Brazil? I think Brazil is a very colorful country, really nice people, warm and friendly culture. With the music, it's a little bit of a challenge because um, what I do is a little bit more laid back and soulful compared to the, the harder stuff I think that they're used to. So, you know, all I can do is come and do what I do and uh, not really compromise, just do my thing and play the music that I feel. And to me, that's what's important, you know. Anybody can go and play the hits and anybody can play uh, you know, the, the real hard commercial stuff and make the people scream, but that's not really where I come from. That's not my goal. I try to just play music uh, that's a little bit more in-depth, a little deeper, a little more soulful, a little more musical. Try to turn people on to something new, give them a taste of something that they're not necessarily completely used to, and uh, keep it fresh. Keep uh, trying to turn people on to new tracks too, and uh, test out new material and have a good time with it, you know? That's what it's all about. I played in bands a lot when I was younger, so I come from a very musical background. Um, so for me, I love electronic music. I love the fact you can incorporate all types of music. Latin music, soul, funk, disco, you know, reggae. You can, you can mix it all up with electronic music. So that's sort of what attracted me in the first place to, uh, to getting into electronic music. I get inspiration from traveling all over the world, from Europe to Asia, Australia, and you know, everywhere. It's like, I get inspiration from different places, different people, um, culture, different types of music. So I take that with me back home, and I get into my recording studio, and I, I write and record music. That's, that's my main passion. That's what I really love, is to write and create music. So for me, um, you know, that's the, I take my inspiration from everywhere, then I bring it back home and work. This episode on you is uh, Pedal Pusher. Has it anything to do with the softness of your music? I mean, Deep House and all that? Well, Pedal Pusher, yeah, it was a little bit more of the soulful side um, of things, especially more in the late 90s. Um, it was a moniker that I would use in productions that were a lot more listening pleasure, not necessarily for the dance floor, but more stuff that was really enjoyable and atmospheric uh, to listen to as far as the textures and the, the production and the arrangements and, uh, you know, the melodies and everything was very um, laid back and, and, and very, you know, soulful, atmospheric, uh, a little bit different than some of the other stuff I do, um, you know, under, under different monikers. I'm always looking out for new artists, you know, always trying to play new music from new artists uh, from, from all over the world, as well as a lot of the, you know, old school kind of classic deep house guys that I really enjoy. You know, I've always loved the old school guys like Kerry Chandler and Frankie Knuckles and Little Louis Vega. You know, some of these guys that are kind of the, the, the classic house roots of this kind of music that I like to play as a DJ. You know, so uh, for me, I like, you know, it doesn't have to be anybody particular. I, I really try to mix it up, play a lot of different styles and um, incorporate the stuff that I enjoy uh, into my sets. The record labels that release your music and mixes were mainly naked music recordings uh, that is best related to you. Is there any relationship between OM and Salted or can we consider a transition from uh, what you released at that time and what you're going to release from now on? I, I released a lot of stuff on the labels that you mentioned before. That's why I wanted to start something new. So I started Salted Music as a, uh, a new creative project, you know, something new that I could release new music on from new artists as well as my own material build a catalog of music and uh, just have fun with it, you know? So it, I, at first I had Ohm Records distributing for me, for the label, 
but then uh, we went a different direction and um, now we're using different distributors. So as Salted Music is its own, it's its own uh, entity, its own vehicle, its own company. It's separate than anything else. What do you want to sing for us tonight? Um, I'm going to sing a couple of uh, new tracks um, from my album called Free. I'm going to do some old tracks and, and, um, and stuff from like, you know, a couple years ago. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Do you consider Lisa Shaw as one of the best singers for your cool and warm type of sound? Yeah, Lisa's great. I mean, she's got such a classic style. It's very unique. It's her own. She doesn't try to be anybody else. She just really holds uh, what she feels true to her heart. And she's also, <clears throat> excuse me, a very talented uh, performer, very seasoned, uh, you know, singer. She used to play in live bands uh, through her life as well. So she has a lot of experience with with touring and, and uh, performing on all different levels. Is this just another day? Can make it go your way. It's a pleasure always to tour with her as well as work with her in the studio because we write really well together. Our styles, uh, we're very open-minded and our styles connect really well and um, it just, it works, it works really well so I always enjoy it. But what about the sales of this new album, Get Salted Volume 2? The market's ever-changing, you know. I mean, as in the last 10 years, the CD has gone completely down. And of course, downloads are on, you know, the rise. That's the future of, uh, of music. So people buy music more on iTunes and places like this, you know. So we sell a lot digitally, but we also still sell uh, quite a few physical CDs as well. But, you know, with Virgin Records closing and Tower Records closing and all, all the major record stores that have closed in the last few years. There's not really a whole lot left but small boutique record shops across the world, you know. But, uh, you know, between Asia and Europe and, and everywhere else in the world, uh, you know, there's definitely pockets uh, in the world where there's a lot of fans of this music and they those are the people who keep continuously buying the music and, and making, it, uh, making it relevant, you know. Yeah.